Hi, Alec Miller here, founder of Rose and Rogues, and our goal is to change the way businesses think about creatives and the way creatives think about business. Today, I'm doing something a little bit different. There's gonna be a tutorial after the main part of the video. If that's what you're here for, feel free to skip ahead. So why is efficiency so important? Well, I'm gonna use a story from James Clear to make it clear, no pun intended. Since 1908, British cyclists had won a single gold medal in the Olympic Games. In 110 years, no British cyclist had won the Tour de France. So in 2003, Great Britain's cycling board hired David Brailsford. He set about with the goal of making every single thing they did better by 1%. Everything, not just the flashy stuff like lap times. They looked at gels that helped with muscle recovery, they hired a surgeon to teach each rider the best way to wash their hands to reduce the chances of catching a cold. They determined the best type of pillow and mattress that led to the best night's sleep for each rider, as well as hundreds of other details that they improved by just a small percentage. Just five years after Brailsford took over, the British cycling team dominated the Olympic Games in Beijing, where they went on to win an astounding 60% of the gold medals available. Four years later, when the Olympic Games came to London, the Brits raised the bar as they set nine Olympic records and seven world records. That same year, Bradley Wiggins went on to win the Tour de France for the first time ever as a Brit. I'm not gonna get into the science of it all at this time, but you can clearly see how small, consistent improvements in how you operate can lead to huge results. Royals and Rogues is based on the concept of removing inefficiencies from the creative process. I have a rule that helps us apply this. If you find yourself doing something more than three times, it's time to automate it. What I mean by this is if you find yourself spending a long time on a task because it's repetitive and not because it requires creative thinking, then it's probably time to find ways to cut out the redundancies. As an example, this might be developing a default template that loads up every time you open a new project or create a new folder or creating watch folders to be auto encoded to the formats you know you're going to deliver at the end of every project. This can even be learning a keyboard shortcut to save you multiple clicks. If you're a business looking to hire creatives or a creative team, ask about their process. What is it that they do to become more efficient? What's their pipeline? How do they make a project go from concept to execution efficiently? And as a creative, document this stuff. Record how you do what you do and present it to your clients. Being able to clearly communicate what gives you an edge against other creatives in the marketplace is a huge benefit. And clients love knowing that you have a process that you've thought through and refined. Looking to constantly improve in all areas adds up, and it will save you years of time, no joke. It also allows you to spend more time on the whys rather than the hows, the important parts of the project, like the customer experience and coming up with new creative ideas and refining the script. These are where you should be spending the majority of your time, not in the repetitive tasks that it takes to execute it. Now we're getting into the second part of this video, which is gonna be a tutorial on how to animate a lot of text in After Effects. There are a million and one tutorials on animating text. However, I haven't seen that many on animating a whole lot of text all at once. You're either using advanced expressions or you're doing it all by hand. And a lot of ways I've seen people do this is destructive, which is kind of the worst. So I'm gonna teach you a way to do this that's non-destructive, that lets you animate a lot of text and use different expressions than just the ones built into After Effects. Um, it's also crazy fast, which is my favorite part. So before we start, you're gonna need two plugins, Dojo Shifter and Decompose Text. There's a third plugin, which is Doit, which I highly recommend, but it's optional. All of these plugins are pay what you want or donation-based, so you can get them for free. I do recommend though, giving them a little bit of money as you will save tons of time using these. Once you have your plugins installed, open up your Windows panel and dock them somewhere useful. You're gonna be using these all the time. So I'm gonna take you guys through this method from start to finish. So we're gonna start with a completely blank slate here and you're gonna see just how powerful this is. I've already loaded up um, my plugins here into uh, a window just where I can access them easily next to the text window. Um, I highly recommend you do this, uh, but if you don't know where to find them, they're in window and if you scroll down, this, is, this should be where they all show up if you've installed it correctly. So we're gonna make a new text layer by hitting Control T and then just simply clicking where we want it. Something to note is I don't think this method works if you create a bounding box. So if you try to create a text box as opposed to just regular text, I don't think it will work too well. So if you try to drag the text tool and create 
um, something like this, I, I think it can't break it down that way. So be sure to just type it out normally. It gives you more control anyway. Um, so generally it's a better way to go. Here we are gonna make some text. I've been watching a lot of Mandalorian, so I'm gonna write and I'm just gonna scale it up so we can see it nice and easily here and center it. Um, I also have do it here and you'll see why in a second. So here we have a cool little piece of text. And let's say we want to add an animation of each letter moving up into place uh, from a, from nothing to something, right? So I'm gonna throw a ramp on it just to make it look interesting. And this is also how I can create my general look for most of the text I use. Okay, so we have our text. It says Mandalorian. And uh, we're gonna add our animation here. So I'm gonna do position and opacity. Um, and they're gonna go from zero to 100 here. So it fades in. And we're also gonna move it from down below here. And so now we kind of have a nice little movement here. We're gonna add some, some curves here just to make the position more interesting. I'm hitting F9 just to make them both um, ease in and ease out. What's cool about this is we can also add an expression. So we added in a transformation spring and I'm changing it to two and five. So it gives that little bump. You see how it goes up, overshoots slightly and then lands where it needs to be. It's very subtle. This is happening to the whole word. And let's say we want each letter to come in one at a time. Well, what we can do is we simply choose decompose text over here and characters. We can do this by words, characters or lines. We're gonna do characters. You wanna pretty much always use original position using expressions and not approximate position without expressions. Um, this can be useful if you really, really can't have expressions on your text, but um, it, it moves the text around slightly, and so you're gonna have to spend a lot of time manually putting it right back into place. This is the way to go. So we hit decompose text. I'm gonna control A and then L to kind of shrink my layers. And now we have all of our words separated out. And this is awesome, because now all we have to do is simply click on Dojo Shifter, and we're gonna shift it by two frames and offset. And this offsets all of our words by two frames, either ascending or descending based off of how we've selected our text, our layers. And I hit play, and now they come in one at a time. And what's so cool about this is um, we were able to do all this in a matter of seconds where normally we would have taken this whole setup with the animate tool and then setting um, the uh, affecting range essentially, right? We'd go to animate and we have to go to um, position. And then once we have position, we have to use a range selector. And then we don't get control over the overshoot or anything like that. And the other thing is it's all set to one um, flat way of doing it. This way, if we want to do something fun, like have it be farther and farther out towards the end here, um, and then closer in the middle, we can do that, right? So the last ones take a lot longer to come on than all the other ones. Um, we have complete control over each individual letter to animate however we want, right? We can even select all these and come up here, and instead of going to ascending or descending, choose random, and then it will randomly align them within a certain amount of frames. So we'll say within 30 frames, make them random. And so now all the letters come on randomly. And it's just so much faster to animate a whole bunch of letters here than it would be to normally animate using the, the those expressions, right? Using those uh, text animation tools and range selectors and whatnot. So we're gonna go back to descending. And now they're all separated by 30 because I didn't reset it. So. You can see how that could be useful too, right? If you wanted to do like a nice slow animation and it's so fast rather than hand doing everything. But we're gonna go back to separating them by two frames, offset them, right? And then if we added some effects and stuff, uh, we could get a fun look. We get a fun look like this where they all come in and then that glow applies as they animate in. And it's just kind of a fun little effect, right? So that's how to animate a whole bunch of text in one word. But let's say we have something like a sentence like this, right? You have a whole block of text, but you're trying to do something like a documentary and you have like something at the beginning that you want someone to read or a lot of movies do this at the beginning where there's this general statement, right? Of like, here's what's going on right now at this time. And you want to animate each of these on, but it takes a lot of work to animate them on one at a time and, you know, pasting each line or once again using range selectors and expressions and then you can't add on interesting effects so we here we have a box blur effect and you can see it's affecting the whole thing at once and if you wanted to apply this to multiple lines traditionally what you'd have to do is make each line separately animate them all in um, and the range selector wouldn't affect this effect because it's not within um, the animate tool right within our text animations tools down here there's no blur um, effect 
So if we wanted to, oh, there is a blur effect. Okay. Well, we have a blur effect, but there's nothing complex. If we wanted to do like a lens blur or something like that, right? This would work with it. So here we go. Here we have our animation and we just want to split it up by lines. So we're going to select our text. We're going to choose lines and then decompose. And it's going to break it up by all those lines. Hitting control A to select all layers and then control L or command L if you're on a Mac. Um, which normally shows waveforms, but because there's no waveforms, uh, it's gonna break it up like this. And now we can offset it by two again. We might wanna offset it a bit more, but you're gonna see it's gonna slowly come in one at a time. And we're gonna drop this down to third quality just to speed up the preview, one line at a time. But that might be too fast, right? Like if someone's reading it, they're just gonna be overwhelmed. So we're just want, we just wanna separate it out a little bit more. So they're gonna need like 12 frames here. So that's a half a second that's gonna give us between lines. And now you have a little bit more time to kind of read the top couple lines before the next one comes in. And we can do this even more or even less, right? We can do however we want, but you could do something crazy, right? If you had some sort of Blade Runner effects on there and all this other stuff, you could do that as well. So that brings me to the third example of how we could use this, which is within a, uh, a really complex animation. So let's say you have an animation like this, right? Where we have uh, multiple masks uh, on each of the text layers animating in uh, all these effects as they kind of get drawn on with like lasers essentially, right? It's really fun. So you have something really complex like this and normally it'd just be impossible to break this up. If you send this to the art director and they say, yeah, that looks really good, but can we have it go letter by letter? So, or word by word, just to break it up a little more. And you're like, Ugh, that's gonna take so long to do. That means I gotta draw on my, my little mask here on each one, apply these same effects in each one, manage the timing of each one and it's just going to be a, a huge pain and then if you want any changes it's going to take forever so instead what we can do is we just select our text we go uh, instead of lines we're going to choose by words decompose text here we can do our offset again by let's say four frames okay so there we have it now these all animate on one word at a time and um it's really easy to control. And one of the best parts about this now is, let's say the art director comes in yet again and says he wants some type of a change, right? Now, normally this would be a huge pain and you have to redo the whole thing, but um, what's really nice is we still have our base layer here. So if it's an extreme change, like I wanna change the whole sentence, we can just go change this base layer and it still has all the effects and all the same timings and then simply just offset it again. So that's if it's an extreme change. But if it's a small change, Right, like let's say he says, can I just get rid of those three dots? We don't want three dots, that's cut or written or something like that. You just go in, click on the layer with the three dots and delete them. So now we have our animation that's really complex and is using multiple masks, but completely under our control now and still editable very easily without changing every, the timing of everything. There we have it. That's three examples of how you can use this um, in both huge sentences. You can use it by word or by letter and every time it's going to be way faster than using the animate tools. Once you get really good at this, it kind of becomes second nature. You just type out a sentence exactly the way you want, do one animation, move it up or down, and then just simply decompose and then use the Dojo Shifter. Dojo Shifter, by the way, also works with non-text layers. It can work with anything. So if you have a bunch of shapes that you want to animate in one at a time, you can do the same essential thing. So this is how I animate text extremely quickly um, if I have a whole lot of it to animate, and it saves me tons of time and it's one of the ways that I've been able to be make myself crazy efficient and after effects and I teach it to um, the team that I, I work with so I highly recommend you try this out and if you have any questions I'd love to hear in the comments below so there you have it that's how you animate text quickly and non-destructively saving yourself hours of time if you have a better way of animating lots of text let me know I know there's a million ways to do anything in after effects and this is just the way that I found that works best for my team so this helped you save some time or you got something from the story part of it, please hit like, hit subscribe, and leave me a comment down below letting me know if you found this useful or not. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.